Hello, economic students. Today, we are going to look at 2007 AP Microeconomics Free Response Questions, Form B. We're going to go over three questions. First of all, this video will show the first free response question from the 2007 Form B, free response for the micro exam. So, first, we have to assume that the cellular telephone industry is monopolistically competitive. All right, so for A, we need to assume that these manufacturers are earning short run economic profits. This is, will be important. We need to draw a correctly labeled graph for a typical firm in the industry and show each of the following. We need to show the profit maximizing output and the profit maximizing price. We also then need to show the area that represents the economic profit. So here I have a partially pre-drawn graph where it shows the price column or axis and the y and the quantity on the x-axis. We're going to have your downsloping demand curve and your marginal revenue curve that is downsloping but less than the demand curve. And this curve, the marginal revenue curve, is less than the demand curve in a monopolistically competitive firm because a change in the price for a product required to get to the next sale or to increase output by one more is going to apply not just to that next sale but also all the sales before it. So your marginal revenue is going to decrease by a greater extent than the demand because of this. So now let's try to find the profit maximizing output and price. So the, where does that equal? Well, the profit maximizing output is at MR equals MC, which is right here. So we draw a line up here. So then there's the output. We can write that right now. We'll do a Q star. Then to find the maximizing price, we do not go simply over here, but we have to go di vertically directly up to the demand curve. And that brings us right to this point here, which then carries over to here and here is our profit maximizing price. Now we need to figure out where does our average total cost curve or ATC curve go and this will tell us what our profit is, our economic profit. So since the thing said earlier that th there is short run economic profit, we know that at the profit maximizing output and price, price will be greater than average total cost. So at this point right here the ATC curve will come in somewhere below price. So we can just draw it like this for now. And we label it ATC. And so right here, we can see that from here to here, there is a gap. And that is going to tell us how we can get our profit. So what is economic profit? Well, it is our price minus our ATC and that number is multiplied by the quantity or the output produced and that'll tell us our economic profit. So we're going to go here and the difference between our price here and ATC and we're going to multiply that by the quantity so we're going to draw a line straight over here. This rectangle right here is going to tell us our profit, our economic profit. So right here we know that obviously because it tells us we're earning profits, we know that this will be positive and not loss, which is a negative profit. So this is how we can find part A. Part B, at the profit maximizing price you identified in part A, would the typical firm's demand curve be price inelastic? And explain. No, the price will be elastic. How do we know this? Well, this is something you must learn and memorize, that when marginal revenue is positive, which is the case at the profit maximizing output, because marginal revenue is up here, the price is always elastic. And almost every firm, I don't think any firm would want to do otherwise, produces in the elastic region. In the elastic region, as output increases, well, first of all, any region, as output increases, the price decreases. But in the elastic region, as that price decreases, your revenue is going to increase. So firms are going to want to increase their revenue as they lower their price or else they would lower the price. So that tells us the answer to B, which is that it's elastic. Part C, given the information in part A, what happens to the demand curve for the typical firm in the long run? And we have to explain this. Well, when new firms enter the industry, which is the happens in the long run, these new firms will reduce the share of the market that each existing firm has. And so because of this, the profits are going to actually decrease and actually become zero because the demand curve is going to shift left and in that shift we're going to see that it 
comes in almost, not almost, it does intersect this ATC curve. And that's going to give us zero profits. And this is because as each firm enters the industry, they take away shares of the existing firms. Also remember this, this is important. Monopolistically competitive firms cannot make economic profit in the long run. That's something you need to know. And so because of this, we know if price is going to equal the average total cost curve, this quantity becomes zero. So multiplied by that, the economic profit is zero. So there's no profit in the long run, which will help us find the answer to D. Using a correct, newly correct, new correctly labeled graph, show the profit maximizing output and price for the typical firm in the long run. Well, we have a similar graph here, but since the demand curve has shifted left, which happens in the long run, it will now intersect the ATC curve at the profit maximizing output. So profit maximizing output is right here. So at here, where ATC is going to intersect, and it's going to come down and then back up, and there is our ATC curve. All right. At this point, we know that prop or price equals ATC, so that's zero. So the profit is zero. So there's no profit in the long run. And now we should label this Q star, maybe two, and then the price star two. And these are our new equilibrium price and quantities at the profit maximizing. So now we can go to letter E. Does the typical firm produce an output level that maximizes its average total cost, minimizes its average total cost in the long run? The answer is no. Why? Well, we know that average total cost is not as a minimum as it becomes a minimum beyond the profit maximizing output somewhere in this region. And how do we know this? Well, monopolistically competitive firms are not productively efficient. And productive efficiency is achieved when price equals the minimum ATC. So we can write that over here. Productive efficiency is when your price equals your minimum ATC. This is not the case in a monopolistically competitive firm, as you can see in this graph right here in the long run. All right? Letter F. In long run equilibrium, does the typical firm produce the allocatively efficient level of output explained? The answer to this is also no. Why do we know this? Well, allocative efficiency is when price equals marginal cost. Well, right here we see that our price is right here, and our marginal cost is all the way down here. In a perfectly competitive industry, this is the case. But in a monopolistically competitive industry, as is in a monopoly, there is no allocative efficiency because they produce less than what society wants or what they call the socially optimal output. So in this case, the price is greater than MC, marginal cost, which shows us that there is not productive efficiency.